Okay, we're now going to be doing some maximizing, minimizing type problems with the arguments and moduli of complex numbers that are starting to be uh, like loci. So this is where things get a lot more uh, further mathsy than what we've been doing so far. Let's just dive straight in with this kind of question and we'll see where the new bits come up. So it says here that a complex number Z is represented by the point P. This is implying it's going to be some kind of loci question. And it says, given that the modulus of Z minus 5 minus 3i equals 3, first of all, sketch the locus of P. Locus is plural. Uh, sorry, loci is plural of locus. This is just a singular one that we've got here. OK, let's just quickly begin by writing it in its correct form. So it'd be Z minus 5 plus 3i. So we can immediately see that the center of the circle is going to be 5, 3, and that the radius is going to be 3. So it's going to help us for our sketch that we've got here. OK, let's go here and here. So 5 along and 3 up. 5 along, 3 up. That's the center. Now, um, it's going to come 3 down. So when I draw this circle, it's going to go down to the zero and it's going to come up to like six. Not bad. Let's move its location a bit here. OK, let's put that dot nice in the middle. OK, and so this is the three. This would be six. And then we've got zero. Let's think about what these other properties might be. You don't need to do these, but they might help us for the geometric interpretation. If it's five here and it's moving three across, that's going to be an eight and three to the left it's going to be a two. So here is the first part of the question done. It then wants us to find the Cartesian equation. Now we don't have to do this long method that we've got here, method one. We might need it later on, but for now we're just going to go straight in with method two. So the Cartesian equation would be x minus five from its coordinate squared plus y minus three squared equals the radius squared, which is nine. So let's just go straight in and leave that as a nine. Now here's where it gets really, really interesting because we are asking something different. We are saying find the maximum value of the argument of Z in this interval. This is just the standard interval that we've got here. So we're talking about all of these bits on the circle. All of these things are Z because Z can be in any of those places. So for example, let's say that I put Z over here. This is an example of where I put Z. If I drew its line on, this would be its argument. I could have put Z, let's do it in a different color. I could have put Z over here because it would still satisfy the locus and its argument would be this one, let's call it alpha. But I also could have done a different value, a different location for Z. Let's do it in orange. Maybe I could have done it over here. And that one's got an even bigger angle, which I'll call beta. So you need to try and think to yourself, where can I put Z so that it would have the biggest argument? Well, I'm hoping that you can spot it should be when we have a tangent. If I go like this here, that is going to be where I'm creating the biggest value for its tangent. So let's just say the place where Z would be, would be right here. It's a tangent to the circle. So this is where all your ge geometry from GCSE is going to be coming in. Now, this must be a right angle. We also know that the length of the radius is three. And we're gonna try and find out what the size of that argument is. So, Let's do some maths. Let's work out this bit that we've got here. I'm going to zoom in on this diagram for a second. So I am going to split this into this kind of shape. Now, I should be able to find out, let's switch up another color. I should be able to find out what this angle and this angle here are. And I'm hoping you can spot that those two that I've just indicated in blue this one and this one, they're going to be the same as each other. So let's call that one alpha and then that one alpha. So hopefully that means that we can say that the angle we're looking for, the argument of Z, is theta 
which is 2 alpha. So this is where your drawing is going to become really useful to try and find out what do we know. Let's see if we can add some other things to the diagram. We know that this is 3, and we know that this is 5. And by circle properties, we know that this angle and this angle must be the same as each other because this and this are both tangents. So I think we should be able to figure out what alpha is. If I draw this triangle that I've got here out again, I'm hoping it's going to pop out to you what you're looking to do. So that's alpha. This is 5 and this is 3. Ah, good. We know that tan of alpha is going to be the opposite divided by the adjacent. So alpha is the inverse tan of 3 over 5, which means that we should be able to find out what theta is by just doubling whatever that value is. So argument of z is going to be theta, which is 2 alpha, which is 2 multiplied by the inverse tan of 3 over 5. Am I in radians mode? I Yes, I am. So I'm going to do 2 multiplied by the inverse tan of 3 over 5. And my answer is 1.08 radians. I guess the tricky bit in this is remembering your circle properties that this shape that we've got here is a kite. The reason we know it has to be a kite, I guess, is the fact that this is a right angle and this is a right angle, um, and these are the same lengths. So it has to be a kite shape that we've got there. So a bit of geometric reasoning for that section. So that was part C. Now we're going to have a look at part D of the question. It says find the maximum, sorry, the minimum and maximum values of the modulus of Z. So I'm actually going to redraw that diagram because I think it's going to help us to do that for the last part of the question, because we've got way too much stuff going on with that. So there was a circle like this. OK, good. And I think we knew that this was 5 and this was 3. OK, remember what I was saying. We're now going to try and find the maximum and minimum values of the modulus of Z. Remember, Z could be any of the locations on this circle. And let's just do a couple of examples. Let's say that Z was over here. That length of the line is the modulus of Z. Let's say that Z was over here. The length of the line is the modulus of Z. So where are you going to put Z so that it's got the longest line possible? I'm hoping you will be able to tell me that the place where Z will be the longest line possible will be through, from the origin, because we're always talking about it from the origin, through the center, right to the other side, so that it would be on that opposite side of the circle. So I'm going to draw that on. It's going to go through the circle. It's going to go right through to the other side. This location here is where Z is going to be its maximum distance from the origin. And then the minimum distance is going to be this one here, where Z is going to be far away from the origin. You can try putting it in different locations, but I guarantee it's going to be further away. It's all to do with the fact that um, it has to pass through the centre. So let's just um, figure out what these values are. We're not trying to find the value of Z. We're trying to find the maximum and the minimum value that the modulus of Z can be. So let's think about the length of it all the way up to here. OK, and then it's going to get nice and easy. This is 5, this is 3, so the length of that line would be the square root of 5 squared plus 3 squared, 5 squared plus 3 squared, which is 25 plus 9, which is root 34. So this distance is root 34. Now, Z max is going to be root 34 plus this distance. Well, this extra distance that we've got here is the radius of the circle. So let's write down here that the maximum value of the modulus of Z is going to be the square root of 34 plus the radius. Now, we know the radius of this, don't we? Because we've been doing it the whole question. The radius of this circle is 3. So it's going to be the square root of 34 plus 3. 
and the minimum value of the modulus of z is therefore going to be the square root of 34 minus 3 because the minimum value of z that's the square root of 34 but I want to remove the radius so that I'm just left with that last bit there for the minimum value of the modulus of z. So we've got these two answers. We've got root 34 plus 3 is the maximum and root 34 minus 3. So do you see how it suddenly stepped up a notch? We're now not just plugging things into formulae, but we're really having to draw things and pull in all of our knowledge of geometry to be able to answer these questions. Let's tick off that we've done part D. OK, we are going to try one more here and then we're going to move on to another Lego. You might like to have a go at doing this one yourself, um, but I'm going to go through this one here and then you can check and see if you've got the same one. It's pretty similar to the other, um, perhaps a little bit easier. So given that the complex number Z satisfies this equation, find the minimum value of the modulus of Z and the maximum value. Well, even though it doesn't tell you to do this, these questions are always going to rely on the fact that you sketch it. So I'm going to get it in a nice form. So I'm going to have it as minus 12 plus 5i equals 3. So it's going to be a circle. It's going to have center 12, 5, and its radius is going to be 3. So we're going to go 12 along, somewhere over here. We're going to go 5 up, somewhere over here. And we're going to draw a circle now because it's going to have a radius of three that means it's just going to come down to a two and up to an eight so it's not going to be crossing the axes anywhere obviously if the radius was bigger it's going to be like crossing the axes like this but our one isn't even going to cross the axes it's going to go like this okay and it wants us to find out the maximum minimum value of the modulus of z now remember modulus of z can be anywhere that it likes sorry the, the value of z can be anywhere on this circle but we're saying we want to find out what's the maximum that its modulus can be. Well, because it's being measured from the origin, as we said before, it's going to be through the centre of the circle. This will be where it's its maximum. This will be where it's its minimum. So I think a good starting point would be, well, what is the distance to the origin? Well, we know that we've got a triangle there, which is 12 across and 5 up. I'm hoping you know that there is a Pythagorean triple, which is a 5, 12, 13. So the length of that line there is 13. And we also know that the radius is 3. So this bit here is 3, and this bit here is 3. Meaning the maximum value of z is all the way to the centre, which is 13. Sorry, the modulus, the maximum value of the modulus of z is all the way from the origin to the centre, which is 13 plus 3. So it's 16. So the maximum value of the modulus of z is 13 plus 3. And the minimum value of the modulus of z is going to be 13 minus 3, which is 10. When we're going here and then back three spaces like that. OK, so that is everything that I've got to do with circles so far. There'll be some trickier ones with some exam questions and bits coming up later. Um, but you should now be able to sketch them and solve some of the different problems. Um, stuff like this, you may have seen when I was doing this, I was like pausing for a little bit just to try and the geometry of it. It's not always obvious what it is that you're looking for. Um, but I like this idea of thinking, OK, where could I put Z on this circle in order to get the maximum value of the argument? Where could I put Z on this circle in order to get the minimum value of the argument? In fact, let's think about where Z would be for the minimum argument. Well, I'm hoping you could tell me the place where Z would be its minimum argument is down here and the minimum value of its argument would be zero. It's actually the, the value of that Z would be is just five. OK. So good luck with those questions.